Welcome to this memorial service celebrating the life and legacy of Rabbi Tachihara. Rad touched the lives of so many people in our community, and he is greatly missed. At the same time, we celebrate the life that was and all he meant to everyone, and we rejoice at the life that continues in our
gracious Buddha within, Holy One in whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with Rod and Christine and all family and friends in their grief. Surround them with your love that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. In the name of the Buddha and of the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you please be seated? Denver Broncos fan. 
And during that season in 2015, when the Broncos made a pretty good run in the Super Bowl, we wasted an awful lot of time talking about the team each week. And as the season went on, we were both we both discovered we were also pretty good Monday morning quarterbacks. <laughs> I really enjoyed that time with him. Um, just those moments of you knowing his passion that we had something that we shared together. I'm, I'm very thankful to have had the opportunity to know Rod. Uh, I've learned a lot from him about life and family. He was a really honorable man. Thank you for everything, Mr. T. We miss you. Go Broncos. <laughs> My journey with Rod Tartahara began nearly 10 years ago when he took the assistant custodian position here at BTGS. After a short period of time, my relationship with Rod grew more into a friendship than just co-workers. If I were to choose a few short words to describe Rod, they'd be humble, kind, gentle, smart, compassionate, happy, and my wingman. Rod always wanted to do his part here at the grade school, and I never ever saw him get upset or frustrated about anything. Rod and I, over time, discovered that we had quite a bit in common. We both enjoyed good sounding guitars, Chevrolet automobiles, and fine dining, just to name a few. We shared many home-cooked meals together, as well as double date night out with Lori and Christine. I remember a few years back um, that Rod wanted to introduce Lori and I to sushi. So we made a plan uh, with Rod and Christine and went to this really nice restaurant in Billings called Tao. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I have to admit that when they brought the sushi out, I, I looked at Lori and I said to myself, I can't believe I'm going to eat raw fish. <laughs> but I thought I'm going to give this a go for Rod. So I bucked up and I tried it and I can honestly say it was pretty good. No offense to the Norwegians present, but I don't think I would have to draw the line when it comes to Budapest. <laughs> Rod and I shared a love for music and playing guitars together. Some of my fondest memories are playing small-time gigs with him, singing old-time Beatles songs, or whatever came to mind. Rod also shared his musical gift with kids and members of our community by teaching guitar lessons. That's who Rod was. Always investing in other people. Giving up himself to teach and help people. Whether it was landscaping and caring for Mother Earth, recycling waste, cleaning bathrooms and taking out trash at the grade school, or the time he spent each summer mentoring to the many kids in the community, giving them a job with his landscaping business. Rod cared deeply for the children in our community and was always there for our kids, especially the fragile and at risk. I guess that is one of the reasons he was such a perfect fit here at BTGS. 
Rod was a caring and devoted father, grandfather, and husband, and went above and beyond caring for his son Darren and two grandchildren. Rod had a very special relationship with his wife, Christine. One particular time that comes to mind is when Rod, my son Colton, and I went fishing on Yellowstone one day. Rod had this beautiful wood drift boat that I admired so much. I would always hint that one day we should take it out fishing. Well, one day we finally got the chance and set out for the day. It was such a beautiful summer day. Partly cloudy, calm, about 75 degrees. We dropped the boat and Colton off at the Pelican Fishing Access, and Rod and I followed to the reed point. I followed Rod to the reed point access where we dropped off his suburban and trailer. We headed back to Pelican and parked my truck and got in the boat with Colton. I did most of the rowing that day and was so in awe of the scenery, the feel of that boat, and watching my son and Colton, my son Colton and Rod fly fishing together. About halfway to Reed Point, Rod says, Guys, I think I left the keys for the Suburban in Rick's truck. <laughs> well, thanks to cellular phones and a good wife. Rod called Christine and she drove a set of keys all the way out to the Suburban in Reed Point and saved the day. I don't think I ever said so, but that meant a lot to all of us, Christine. Thank you so much. Oh, and by the way, Rod was the only one that caught any fish that day. Rod always had my back here at the grade school. As Mr. Ketchum said, he and Christine lived right across the street from the school. So he was always keeping a close eye on anything out of the ordinary. One day, uh, Alan Rodenberg stopped by in the school office and said he'd like to do some training with the K-9 unit uh, uh, some evening in the old Padula house next to Rod and Christine's. It's a, the house next door we, that the school owns uh, and uses for storage. Well, I forgot to tell Rod about this. <laughs> so I get this phone call one evening about 9 o'clock, and it's Rod. He sounded very anxious and said, Rick, I think there's something major going down next door. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He said, well, there's cop cars in the parking lot, and they're taking dogs into the old dual house. <laughs> then it occurred to me what was going on. I apologized for not letting him know, and we got a laugh out of that one for a very long time. <laughs> Alan thought it was pretty funny, too. Rod was also there for me when my son and daughter were involved with sports and other extracurricular activities. I never missed a single track meet, football game, volleyball match, or music program because of Rod Tochahara. Rod always assured me that he had everything under control at the grade school, and that I needed to take that special time for my kids. Even the time that I was injured and had to be out for an entire week, 
God was there for me. That peace of mind was priceless. I still think about God a lot. I still feel his presence here at the grade school. And even though I must continue the journey without him, I will always cherish the precious time we had together. I am a better person because of Rod Chahara's influence on my life. Rest in peace, dear friend. Rod loved his wife and his family 
They were his center. His whole life revolved around them. And like all good husbands, fathers, and grandfathers, Rod would have moved heaven and earth for them if it was humanly possible. He wanted them to be happy and carried this undying hope that things would come out right for each of them. Rod worked hard for his family. Even on the days with his heart condition and not feeling well, he never complained. He also shared a gift with us all. The last time I got to spend time with Rod was the last guitar lesson that Jeff and Luke and I had with him. At the end of the lesson, Rod had Roger Hoggy come and play with him. Rod before the lessons and after looked very tired, and now I believe he was truly struggling physically. But when Rod picked up his guitar and started to play, all that changed. He became all smiles and laughter. We in this community, as well as fam his family, will miss his music. Rod stuck to his Buddhist and Christian beliefs, not preaching them, but living them. He so wanted to see the world to be a better place. Yes, Rod was human like all of us, but he was a hero that we need so many more of in this life. I miss him. We will all miss him. I have thought about what Rod would want us to know, and particularly his family and friends, and I think that it is this. You may not be able to hug him, hold his hand, or tell him about your day, whether it's happy, whether it was happy or sad. You may not be able to feel a pat on your back from Rod when you've done well, or you or you have him help you dry your tears. You may not be able to see that great grin when something pleases him, or listen to him sing and play his guitar or make the perfect cat fly cast, catching a beautiful cutthroat trout. But the love that he had for you will never, ever go away. If you keep that love in your heart, the times that you think of him will still have some degree of pain. But you will find that more smiles will come than tears as time goes on. Rod also would also want you to remember to love yourself. Be gentle and kind to yourself and always use that love to be the best that you can be the way he always saw you and your potential. And last of all, don't hide that love Rod had for you in your heart or put it away in some box for safekeeping. Love your family, your friends, and those in the world around you. When you do that, you build a small flame, and small flames start beautiful warm fires of love. That is how you can keep Rod Tashahara with you. Kindness, love, warmth, 
and generosity. Rod was with us, his second family, the very best of what you all know of him. This past week, I have learned in many ways Rod enriched the lives of all those around him. With his ever warm demeanor and beaming smile, to the time he gave, to, excuse me, to the time he gave, and the care he bestowed upon those who needed a little help. When I think of Rod, it is always of a man with an abundance of character, an intrinsic wisdom, and an extraordinary ease of manner. He did not just smile, he was genuinely kind. He was always attentive, yet said little when little needed to be said. He was the rarest of people who did not merely wait his turn to talk, but really listened. I am incredibly grateful for knowing Rod, for being a small part of a life so well lived, of joining his family in his legacy of love and compassion. I would now like to share with everyone a few words from one of the newer members of my extended family, Rod's son, Darren. In Ephesians 4.2, God tells us to be completely humble and gentle, to be patient, bearing with one another in love. I can think of no better description of my father than this. My dad was the guy that always had a smile on his face no matter how hard the day was. He was there to lend a hand even when his hands were already full. He had the right words to say, and when you left a conversation with him, you walked away knowing your thoughts fell on welcome ears and a heart that cares. My dad would be the first to put himself last for the sake of his family and friends. Dad had a nickname when I was growing up. It was known as the Turtle. You could try to rush him, however, he always moved at rod speed. I remember driving to go fishing when I was a young boy and being so anxious and frustrated because we were driving so slowly. If you have had the pleasure of riding with him, you understand. As I think back on those long trips across California, Oregon, and Montana, Dad and I had the richest, most heartfelt conversations and laughs I could ever have hoped to have with him. He didn't have to explain why he moved so slowly and all he did, his actions spoke to me. They said that rushing through life takes the color out of it. Cherish every moment, because soon they will be fleeting memories, as will the lives we have lived. Dad was a man of honesty, character, and integrity in all his dealings. He believed it's not about how much money you can make or all the things you can try to obtain in the end. What's most important is if you can live peacefully with yourself in your daily decisions and how you have treated the people you come across. If you can answer yes to those questions of doing the right thing, the rest will surely fall into place. My dad has many great things to his family and friends. Above all, in my eyes, he was humble, gentle, patient, and did everything with love. I can see my dad when I let my mind go. He is there in heaven. He is tending to the lawns and gardens of heaven. He is fly fishing the majestic blue waters of the heavenly realms. And he is at peace. I love you, Dad, and will miss you dearly till we see each other again. Thank you all for coming and being part of my father's life. Thank you for all the love and support you have shown my family. No words can begin to express my gratitude. Darren Hitchihara.
Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where. The witness from the Hebrew Scriptures, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. For everything there is a season, and a time for every man under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace.
Rod began his life as a Buddhist and included Christianity into his faith journey. I was born a Baptist and came to include Buddhism in my house of faith. The Heart Sutra that I'm about to read is a fundamental and foundational scripture for Buddhists of any stripe. It is my honor to share it in memory of my friend and my fellow traveler. <coughs> the Heart Sutra of Transcendent Knowledge. Thus have I heard, once the Blessed One was dwelling at Rajagira in Bulger Peak Mountain, together with a great gathering of the Sangha of monks and a great gathering of the Sangha of Bodhisattvas. At that time, the Blessed One entered the Samadhi that expresses the Dharma, called Profound Illumination. And at the same time, Novo Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, while practicing the Profound Prajnaparamita, saw in this way, he saw the five skandhas to be empty of nature. Then, through the power of the Buddha, Venerable Shariputra said to Noble Kabbalah Kiteshvara, Bodhisattva Mahasattva, how should a son or daughter of noble family train who wishes to practice the profound Prajna Paramita? Addressed in this way, Noble Kabbalah Kiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva said to Venerable Shariputra, O Shariputra, a son or daughter of noble family, Who wishes to practice the profound project of Arabita should see in this way. Seeing the five skandhas to be empty of nature, form is emptiness, emptiness also is form. Form is no other, emptiness is no other than form, and form is no other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, perception, formation, and consciousness are emptiness. Thus, Sharaputra, all dharmas are emptiness. There are no characteristics. There is no birth and no secession. There is no impurity and no purity. There is no decrease and no increase. Therefore, Shariputra, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no perception, no formation, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no appearance, no sound, no smell, no taste, no touch, no dharmas, no eye, not to what to, no mind, not to no dhatu of dharmas, no mind consciousness dhatu, no ignorance, no end of ignorance, up to no old age and death, no, old, no end of old age and death, no suffering, no origin of suffering, no cessation of suffering, no path, no wisdom, no attainment, and no non-attainment. Therefore, Shariputra, since the Bodhisattvas have no attainment, they abide by means of Prajnaparamita, and since there is no obscuration of mind, there is no fear. They transcend falsity and attain complete nirvana. All the Buddhas of the three times by means of Prajnaparamita fully awaken to the unsurpassable, true, complete enlightenment. And therefore, the great mantra of Prajnaparamita, the mantra of great insight, the unsurpassed mantra, the unequaled mantra, the mantra that calms all suffering, should be known as truth, since there is no deception. The Prajnaparamita mantra is said in this way. Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasam Gate Bodhisattva. Thus, Sharikutra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva should train in the profound Prajnaparamita. Then the Blessed One arose from that Samadhi and praised the Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, saying, Good, good, O oh son of noble family. Thus it is, O oh son of noble family, thus it is. One should practice the profound Prajna Paramita just as you have taught, and all the Tathagatas will rejoice. Then the Blessed One had said this, Venerable Sharaputra and Noble Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, that whole assembly, and the world with its gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandavars rejoiced, and praised the words of the Blessed One.
The witness of the Gospels from Matthew chapter 5. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Wanted or needed. 
Indeed, we have gathered here to celebrate the life and legacy and to honor the memory of Rodney Kazuyoshi Tachimura. Trying to find adjectives to describe Rod, as you have already heard, is really a difficult thing to do because he had so many varied interests. And yes, I was reminded that not only was he a Denver Broncos fan, they won a Super Bowl a couple of years ago, he was also a Seattle Seahawks fan, they won a Super Bowl a couple of years ago, my Falcons blew a 25-point lead to the New England Patriots a few years ago, so Rod obviously lived better than I do. <laughs> Rod was a deep thinker. We have already heard that. His faith transcended both Buddhist and Christian traditions. Just to give you a little backdrop, this was the service that we prepared a few years ago to honor his father, and Christine wanted that service to be replicated, and we have done so uh, in many ways. We've probably butchered both Christian and Buddhist traditions, but we'll ask for forgiveness rather than permission. Rod got the most out of his 70 plus years. Indeed, his was a life well lived. As all of you know, because you are here, Big Timber is an interesting town with many people coming and going. The four of us leading this service, a classic example of that. Sidebar, once again, it is a testimony to who Rod was that it takes four of us to properly pay tribute to his very large life and legacy. The impact Rod Tachihara made on the wider Big Timber, Sweetgrass County community will have a lasting impact far beyond what many of us have hoped that we would bring here. As with many of you, I recall the numerous impromptu and the planned concerts organized by Rod that we all thoroughly enjoy. Many of these jam sessions were a wonderful respite from a cold winter's evening, providing a warm atmosphere for all of us to enjoy one another. And what makes this place such a special place on earth? I'm native Atlanta, as many of you know, but I left a big part of my heart and soul here in Big Timber, Montana. And part of that is because of the close relationships developed with folks like Rod and Christine. Christine, none of us can imagine the empty void left in your life with Rod's death, but we know it is huge. And all of us want to continue to be there for you, supporting you in whatever way that we can. It's hard to do that long distance, but we want to do that. <coughs> Rod leaves behind a host of loving family and friends, a testimonial to who he was as an incredibly kind and thoughtful individual. Rod had a wonderful way of putting you at ease and making you feel like you were the only person in the room. Many of you have experienced that. He was an amazingly talented individual, and his gifts were likely to show up in a variety of places. Just look over at the wall. As a master gardener and musician, Rod's many abilities constantly brought the community together, no matter politics or social proprieties. From installing and repairing equipment, how many of us have a Rod Tachihara sprinkler system installed in our yards? To making all that beautiful music, Rod touched everyone in some way. He will be sorely missed, but his influence on this community will never die. Perhaps my fondest memory is like those that have been mentioned here earlier, is making the long trip to Billings for sushi, one of Rod's favorite foods, and mine as well. It was a great time to share a meal and friendship and take a short vacation away from the cares and worries that would be waiting on Monday morning. 
All that being said, on such days as this, part of my responsibility in these brief words is to remind all of us, the gathered community, that no matter the time of year, we are always an Easter people living the promise of eternity with the God who created us and calls us to faith and brings us into holy relationship. We live both in the shadows and in the bright light of resurrection. We gather as the earthly expression of the great cloud of witnesses leaning on one another's faith to sustain us with a reminder that we are all safe and secure in the arms of God. Even knowing Rod's long life, his wonderful life, it was way too brief. And it, I have no doubt it came as a shock to you as it did when I saw that text message from Jill, my heart sank. There's always a necessary time of bereavement and healing. We always miss those who are taken from us. That is the nature of our human nature. As you are aware, and this service has made it beautifully obvious, Rod shared in two deeply rich faith traditions, which allow for a most unique faith perspective and journey. Rod approached his Christian understandings with the wisdom that comes from the Buddha and from Buddhism. Since meeting Rod for the first time more than a decade ago now, it's hard to believe that, I've learned that there are a number of religious seekers who have found the pathway combining the tenets of Christianity and Buddhism. They seem to flow together seamlessly, a transition that allows an entryway inaccessible without the aid of, of both traditions. One or the other by itself just simply doesn't do. All our faith perspectives are fulfilling and lacking in their own ways. Each one allowing us a glimpse of the holy while keeping us a safe distance at the same time. All of us look through what the Apostle Paul described as a dark glass, only getting certain pieces of what is a perfect puzzle, no matter which perspective you use to get there. I think that Rod was on to something. I think that my friend Blake is. That the more you expose yourself to a variety of religious experiences, invoking the images of William James from once upon a time, the closer you come to experiencing divine presence in all its mysterious forms. Transcendence creating the awe and wonder that comes with a sense of realized and recognized holiness. Rod was a deeply spiritual person. It simply exuded off of him. You could literally see it. I'm never accused of that, by the way. <laughs> Not only that, but his soft demeanor, his sensitivity, his amazing musical talents made for an amazing person. No one could take a secular song and make it speak a spiritual message better than Rod Tachihara. And as the pastor of the First Congregational Church, with Jill and Dwayne following behind, we got to experience that in amazing amazing ways. Jill truly had her work cut out for her today. So far, so good. <laughs> Rod was blessed with a long life, but not nearly long enough for all of us who loved him and could call him our friend. Even so, we know that Rod was certainly blessed as I've had cause more and more through the years to ponder the brevity of our lives, the prospect of an afterlife with the divine, that means I've had to think a lot about death. When I moved from 
year I went to a senior adult congregation in Florida. So everything it became a little more up close and personal. What I've come to believe is this, that the very thing that, that makes us fear death, that reminds us that we all are going to die, is also the very thing that tells us there is a God, there is an afterlife, and that we are safely protected in the arms of God. And so somehow we find some balance. Along with the epistle writer, we can laugh at death, scoff at death, and ask for the knowing smile and all the security we can muster. O death, where is thy sting? O death, where is thy victory? You cannot touch us. You cannot have us. You are but an annoying and irritating inconvenience. We belong to God, and our God is a God of the living and not the dead. So even in the midst of loss and grief, which is real and palpable, and a part of that will always remain with us, find ways today to rejoice, to take comfort. And as I close this homily, allow these words to permeate your being and give you the solace needed for the living of these days and this day this hard day in particular. Here are these words that I am sure Rod could and would affirm, would verify with all his being, declaring with greatest of bold conviction. In fact, if you wish, imagine that it is Rod who is declaring them to you, preaching and proclaiming these very words to each and every one of us. The time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith, henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on the day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Rod is now cheering us on, now safely harbored in the arms of God. He has received his eternal reward and is now singing with the angels, safely harbored in the presence of God, singing with the Buddha and with Christ for all eternity. What a scene that must be. And he bids all of us come on our appointed day, our day with eternal destiny to be with him in a gladsome reunion of unspeakable joy and unmitigated and unimaginable goodness and grace, a love which is beyond our wildest imagination. The spirit of the Buddha lives, Christ is risen, Rod is risen, and lives as well. Thanks be to God. Let us pray to the Lord. O God, on this day of grief and sadness, we are looking for ways to find some measure of gladness, and we find that when we remember our brother Rod Tachahara, for his gracious spirit, for the time we spent with him, for times on trout streams and at the Grand and at a sushi bar. Wonderful memories. And every time we are reminded of them, it is as if he is right here with us. And for that, we are grateful. Continue to be with Christine and with all family and friends who mourn his love leaving his death. Give them a sense of your grace and presence. Even as we pray a version of this prayer taught to us by Jesus with words like these. Gracious Heavenly Parent, holy is the one who is the great I am. For the divine age to come and for your will to be done on earth as it is in your domain. Sustain us with holy food that transcends each and every day. Please forgive us our obligations as we forgive those who are obligated to us. Do not tempt us with the things of this world and keep us from things that diminish our relationships. For it is your sphere 
your realm, your dominion, your splendor, majesty, and radiance forever and always. Amen. To share music with Rod by hearing him play and sing. The song that Rod performed at last year's community Christmas concert was fortunately recorded so that we can now enjoy it together again. I encourage you to listen to the words of this song. It was in many ways, Rod's signature song. Not only because he loved it so much, but because the words of it talk about the way he understood living this life. This is Rod singing What a Wonderful World.
that there might be something going on more than video. Well, that's because there was more going on with Rod's music, whenever there was Rod's music. And so, if Rod were here, he would say, keep the music going. Keep singing it. Keep playing it. And so, that is what we're going to do. Aren't you excited? I found a recorded track that we're going to try to do this as a compliment and all sing together in Rod's honor. What a wonderful world. Now, because Rod always wanted to sing What a Wonderful World and would never let me do it, I don't know the song very well. So those of you who really know it, sing out. This is your chance. And I'm going to ask you to stand up because we all sing better than we sing. I think I can bring us in when we get to the right spot.
Buddha taught that all life is impermanent and that all those who are born must eventually pass from this life. However, everyone within them has the seeds of their past virtues which have the power to bring a fortunate rebirth in the future. We pray that through the power of this virtue, through the blessings of the holy beings, and through the force of our heartfelt prayers, our dear friend Rod will experience a great good fortune and everlasting peace and happiness. We also pray for the bereaved relatives and friends that they may be comforted in their loss and may find peace of mind and strength of heart. May all beings, without exception, be released from suffering and find true happiness and everlasting peace. Namo Amidabu Tsu. Namo Amidabu Tsu. Namo Amidabu Tsu. Give rest, O Christ, O Buddha, to your servant Rod with your saints. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of humankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created us, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Pass 
Christ for my eyes of curiosity. Dust in the wind. All they are is dust in the wind. Same old song. Just a drop of water in an endless sea. All we do crumbles to the ground, though we refuse to see. Dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. Don't hang on. Nothing lasts forever but the earth and sky. It slips away. All your money won't another minute buy. Dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. Dust in the wind. And everything is dust in the wind. Everything is dust in the wind. That one is pretty good. I never I don't know what key that was. <laughs> I don't think it matters. Oh, the key of us. <laughs> That's correct. That's, that it was worked. our uh, very own key. <laughs> I don't really have any words. This was my contribution to things. Almighty God, to the ground we commit. Rod Tachihara, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Look over him with your favor and peace, and with all of us. Amen. Amen.